My name is Brian Watkins and this is an instructional video for my Accounting 231 class on how to do the third practice set for QuickBooks. So to get started, we're going to make this one, uh, I'll call it QuickBooks practice number three. You would use your own name here. The industry will be a retail shop or online commerce. It's going to be a uh, tourist packages for, for uh, fi people who enjoy fishing. We're going to pick them up and take them fishing on the island. And then the sole proprietorship is our company type. So we're going to hit continue to write the company file. And I'll pause and come back when it's done. Okay, the file's been written. We'll start work on it. Um, naturally, it's going to come up in a bigger window than I need. Okay, so we're going to shut the extra windows. I'm going to adjust this window. And the first thing we're going to do, make some adjustments. Uh, the adjustments are set forth on your practice guide. We need a 10% sales tax. We need purchase orders and inventory. And I'm going to turn off the beep. So here we go. Edit, preferences. First thing that comes up puts me right on the screen for my preferences. I'm going to get rid of the beep. Then we'll go to items and inventory, company preferences, inventory orders are active. All right. So, okay. It'll close everything. It's fine. We'll go back. This time we're going to do sales tax. So sales tax, company preference, yes. We're going to add an item. It already knows that we're adding a sales tax. Here you'd put California, Utah, Nevada, where, wherever. I mean, you've got how many, however many states you operate in. Uh, we're just going to call this sales tax. And when I tab, that comes automatically into the description. Because usually what you're going to put here is going to be a state or a, um, a county or an, an area that has its own sales tax scheme. And if you're doing an online uh, project, you're going to have people coming into your website from all over. So we'll call this State Tax Authority. That's everything we need for the tax item. We'll quick add the, the name. And when we hit OK, another one comes up. We just accept those options. And let's see, just go back home. Come on, where's the home button? Here it is. And that opens up our file. Okay, next thing we're going to do is open our bank account. I believe that it's February 1st, 2015. So we're going to use the Bank of Laie as we have in prior exercises. We're going to receive money from yourself. Add yourself as an other because you're an owner. The account is owner's equity. And the memo... Uh, not in the account list. Okay. It's because I typed it. I should probably just pick it. Okay, so pick it out of the list. Initial funding. Cash 25,000. Now remember how important your date is. Nothing's going to mess you up faster than forgetting to set that date. So we'll double check. We have deposit 25,000. February 1st, we have February 1st, 25,000. They're going to give us two warning messages, the 90 days, that's fine, and the retained earnings account, we know what we're doing here. This is contributed capital, it's not retained earnings. There we go. And if you want to double check, you do a report, do a quick balance sheet, and you'll see that you've got the money in there. And it defaults to today's date. But if you were to uh, set the date back to where we were at the beginning, okay, refresh, it will also show all right. Okay, this one, this project has a lot of purchase orders. And this is to get you ready for the final where we have uh, several different products. So on February 2nd, let's do the first one to Daiwa for 10 reels at 300 each. So we go to purchase orders. It's now February 2nd. We'll put in Daiwa Corp as our vendor. Quick add them. And then we have to describe our item. 
So we're going to add a new item, and this is just going to be called a fishing reel. And if we know more information about it, we can say, yes, it was a Saltiga reel. Okay, so when we buy it, when we send the uh, purchase order out, it's going to say what the manufacturer's name is. And on our receipts, we'll just say fishing reel. Just remember that there are two names given to everything, one which goes out to your supplier and one which goes out to your client. We need an income account, merchandise sales, and these things cost us $300 each. We're not going to sell them separately, so we don't need a sales price at this time. So we'll hit OK, ignore the spelling, and say 50. Okay, so let's double check. We want, oh, sorry, 10, 10, 10 reels. Okay, fishing reels. All right, so save and close that purchase order. Ignore spelling issues. We're going to do purchase order number two now. Number two is going to be to tackle direct for 10 rods at a price of 50. So tackle direct, quick add. We're going to add a new, and this time we'll just use the same fishing rod. Now that you know what you're doing on that, I don't need to go over it each time. It's going to cost us $50 per rod. We have to have an income account. We're not setting a sales price because we're not selling the rods separately. We do need to order 10 of them. So this is the fishing rods. So we'll save and close that purchase order. The third purchase order is to Moimoy Moi Company for 10 rolls of monofilament line at $10 each. So we go purchase order, Moimoy Moi Company, uh, add them as a vendor, and our new item is fishing line. And it's $10 for each roll. Set the income account, merchandise sales, OK, and we want 10 rolls. So this is a fishing line. Close. Now another thing you can do with purchase orders is you can make big lists of things. You, we've been ordering one item from each vendor, but we could conceivably have a huge list of items that we send with each order. Um, here we're going to go to Diamond Fishing Supply for 10 tackle boxes. So Diamond Fishing Supply, quick add them. And this item here by itself can contain many parts. So I'm just going to call it Tackle Box. But here you could have a whole list of all of the little things that go into the tackle box. All right, and the cost of these is going to be $100, not 1000 100 And the income account is merchandise sales. Let's double check. Um, 10 tackle boxes, $100, February 2nd. And uh, just a, a note, down here at the bottom, this inventory information, that's a very useful tool. But we're not using it in this exercise, so we're not going to worry about this date. But if we were uh, going to use... Uh, inventory tracking, we would set that date at this time. But we're not, so we leave it alone. We order 10 tackle boxes. Save and close. Okay, so we have four purchase orders out for four different pieces of um, inventory that we're going to get. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is write a check. Uh, it's going to be on February 5th to Gary's Web Design. So we go to our checkbook, and since this is the first check, we're going to uncheck the to be printed so that we can put a 1 up there. And this is going to be on the 5th, and we're going to do it to Gary's Web Design, and quick add as a vendor. And this one's going to be for computer and internet expenses. We already have those in our list. This is $1,500, 2000 
to set up web page and for one year of hosting. Okay, set up and host web page. All right, fifth, I'll double check. We're looking at $1,500, check number one, Gary's Web, February 5th. Gary's Web, one, fifth, looks good. Save and close. All right, now we're gonna go pick up our materials into our inventory. So we're gonna look, and here we have terms. The terms that are given have to, have to do with whether or not uh, we have the ability to pay less and get a, a cash discount. And what this means is if we pay within 10 days, we get a 2.5% discount. Otherwise, the whole bill is due in 30 days. And we can pay it up to 30 days, but if we want the discount, we pay cash before that time period. So we're going to receive Daiwa with a bill, and there are additional shipping charges of 400 So let's get started. We receive with a bill. It's now... 12th. We're going to select Daiwa, which is going to give us access to the purchase order. So we click the purchase order. And now we have everything in that we, we did before. Now we do the terms. You can see that there's no 2.5 slash 10 net 30. So we're going to add new terms. Up here is just a label. What's in the terms box is what shows up on the bill, but it doesn't actually set the terms. You have to go into these three boxes to do that. So the net is 30 days, the discount percentage is 2.5, and the discount may be had if you pay within 10 days. So be careful always to go the second step and enter these numbers into the box, because if you don't, it won't compute the actual discount. And you can see here that now the computer is keeping track of when that discount can be done. So this is the, the fishing reel bill, and we know that we had an extra $400. So I'm going to recalculate, make sure that it's 400, 3400. Come out, double check. Total bill, 3400. So we're going to save and close. And yes, we want to keep those new terms. All right, the next one we're going to get is on the 13th. It's the fishing line and a bill for 120. Okay, so we're going to look at with the bill on the 13th from Moy Moy Company. It's for the fishing line. No terms are given, so we're going to indicate that uh, it's just due on receipt because we have no real cash discount or deadline. We'll just pay it when we decide to pay it. And this is the fishing line. Now our bill was 120, not 100. It says up here the extra was shipping costs. So we're gonna change this to 120. Okay, so everything looks good. Save and close. All right, next. Tackle Direct's package arrives with a bill of 450 and a note that they were only able to ship 9 rods instead of the 10 that we ordered. Okay, so this, this happens in business sometimes. Uh, it was the 15th, so we're going to receive on the 15th from Tackle Direct. And we'll pull in the purchase order. So not only can you add taxes and shipping to this number, but you can also correct the actual quantity that comes in. We only got nine. And uh, the term that they use is it's on back order, meaning we weren't able to ship enough to you, but we'll, we'll catch up when we can. Uh, okay, bill is due upon receipt. Fishing rods, and we only got nine of them. That's the important one here. So you're going to see 450. All right. Finally, the uh, tackle boxes come, 1,050, and these odd terms, 320, net 45. So again, 
The first number is the percentage of your cash discount, 3% discount. The second number is the days in which you have to take advantage of the discount, 20 days. The net number is when the bill is actually due. So we're going to have to enter all of that as of February 16th. So we receive with the bill on the 16th from Diamond Fishing Supply. We get their purchase order. Everything looks good, but we have an extra $50. That's that. And the terms are unique. They're 320 net 45. So we're going to enter these. Net is due in 45. Discount in 3. Discount if paid within 20. There are the terms. So we have the tackle boxes. So everything looks good. We've got discount date, amounts, save and close. All right. Now, we only have nine surf rods and we want to put together ten packages. So we're going to have to go and buy one. Sometimes you have to go to a different supplier. We don't want to alter the uh, cost information that we've got in our from our regular bills to our suppliers. I don't want to change those terms and make rods that I'm used to paying $45 for uh, 110 So this is going to be a one-off kind of thing, and that's when you use that inventory adjustment process. So we're going to write a check, and the account we're going to use hasn't been created yet. So we're going to add new account and just use an other expense even though what we're doing here is not another expense. It's nothing having to do with accounting. We're just doing this for QuickBooks. So we're going to call an account Inventory Adjustment. And we're going to use that account when we have to take uh, numbers and put them on our inventory, but without using our original supplier. So here we're going to uh, Roy's Fishing Supply. So I'm going to quick add him as a vendor. Let's check number two. This is a replacement fishing rod. And it's going to cost us $110. Okay, and I'm going to put it here temporarily into that inventory adjustment account. So double check. It's the 16, 110, check number two. Now doesn't matter how much of its tax, shipping, whatever. Whatever the cost is for that rod has to go into the, into the fishing rod item in our inventory so that that cost is spread evenly across our fishing rods. So we're going to save and close the check and immediately go to inventory activities. Don't wait. And we're going to adjust. This time we're going to adjust quantity and value. Okay, and it's going to be out of the inventory adjustment. Now, see what happened here? When I hit the pick list, you don't see inventory adjustment. You have to scroll to the bottom. This is the account that the money's going to come from. Now we get the, the item and the item's fishing rods. It tells us right now we have nine of them. But uh, we also want to add to the value. We have 450. So we want 10 rods and we want to add $110 to that 450. So we're going to have 560 in our new value and 10 rods. Now it's going to think that we have $500 worth because it's using that $45 per rod. But we know that we had to pay a lot more than that. So we've got $560. 450 for the original nine rods plus 110 to Roy's fishing supply means that we've paid 560 for this item of inventory. We have to include all of the costs here. So adjust uh, for replacement fishing rod. And you can see now our average cost per item is $56. And that's correct. And as soon as we do that, it draws the money out of the inventory adjustment account. So that if I were to do a profit loss, 
I would not see any reference to inventory adjustment. If you ever see a reference to inventory adjustment, and it's not a zero reference, you've got a problem that you have to go back and fix. All right. Now we're going to write a check for 250 payable to uh, this Aaron Kalama, who is going to assemble 10 fishing poles uh, with the rods, the reels, and he's going to then put the assembly together into a uh, complete fishing kit that we're going to sell to people for $999. So let's write the check first for $250 on the 16th. So check to Aaron Kalama. He's not an employee. He's just doing a one-off project for us. Okay, so he's a vendor. This is an adjustment. So it's there at the bottom. And it's $250 to assemble fishing kits. To assemble fishing kits. Okay, let's double check. 250 February 16th. Okay, so this is going to put the 250 into inventory adjustment. Now I'm going to go to inventory activities. If I already had my assembly done, I would I would go right to it, but I don't have it done yet. So I'm going to do that first. And what we're building here is a complete fishing kit. I think that's what we call it. Call it a oh, custom fishing package. So we'll call it a custom fishing package. I've added I'm going to not use a cost, but I will use an income account and a sales price, $999 for the complete fishing package. Okay, here we put our bill of materials together, and we're going to get one of each. One fishing line, one fishing reel, one fishing rod, and one tackle box. And we could put as many items as we could dream up in here. There's no limit to how many uh, items you can put into an inventory assembly. So at this point we have the assembly. Okay, and we are going to build 10 of them. Okay, that's why we went to the extra expense to get that extra replacement fishing rod. So now we've assembled all our fishing kits, our fishing packages, or whatever we're calling them. All right, so build and close. Now that we've built those, we go back to inventory activities because now we can adjust their value. So if I go to complete fishing package, set the adjustment type to a value adjustment, $5,130 was the old price, but 5380 is the new price because I've added the $250 that we spent to put it together. So add assembly costs. Okay, if we didn't do that, we would incorrectly cost our inventory. So we started with 5130 and we ended with 250 more, or 5380 That emptied the inventory adjustment. Okay. Again, if you do a profit loss, you should not see any inventory adjustment. All right. Now that we have everything uh, built and in inventory, we're going to receive a deposit of nine hundred ninety-nine that goes right into your bank account, and we're going to ship a kit to John White of Seattle, Washington. And now. Apparently we didn't think about this ahead of time, but now we've got to pay a lot of extra shipping charges, and we don't collect sales tax. On all of the final and on the QuickBooks homework in my class, the only time we don't pay sales tax is when I tell you that we're not going to pay sales tax. Okay, I will always tell you what to do with the tax. Don't ever assume that tax is gone. So February 20th, 
John White, he's a customer, and since the money was deposited right into our bank account, that's the same as a cash transaction. We don't actually have to take the cash to the bank. Uh, we just have to convince QuickBooks that cash came through our business. So we're going to go and make a cash receipt. And it's going to be to John White. John White. He's a customer. Automatically quick at him. I believe it's the 20th now. Okay. He's going to get a complete fishing package. One of them. But the tax item here, we can change this to non-taxable. He's not going to pay tax. He's going to pay cash. And this is our first sale. Okay, so we've sold the good. And whenever you make a sale like that, click on your bank again. Because now you're holding cash that you need to deposit. So once I check this screen... The next screen just goes automatically, and that gets rid of all your undeposited funds. But we also had to write a check for shipping charges, 125 paid to, to FedEx. I want you to watch out for things like this on the, on the final. Uh, I might put two or three items on the same date, so be sure you've read the entire description. So let's write our check to FedEx for 125 so we're going to write check, FedEx, I don't even think they use Federal Express anymore. We're going to add them. And what is that $125? That's not something that goes on the inventory. It's our expense. It's a shipping expense. So we're just going to have to add a new account. <clears throat> It'll be an expense account. It'll be current. Don't go to others. Always use the regular expense. <clears throat> I'll call it shipping. And that shipping account is going to get $125 to ship package to Seattle. Okay. Shipping costs. This is an example of what happens when you forget that uh, the internet is going everywhere. You, you have to be ready to ship. Or you have to have a website that tells people... If you live in a certain place, you can't buy our product. Okay, so there's the check. Now, this check right here, shipping charges, looks like it was check three. So I'm going to fix this, and I'll repost it. I'll repost it so that uh, nobody gets confused. All right, so next we're going to write check four to Gary's Web Design to immediately make changes to the website so that we don't have this shipping problem again. So I go Gary's Web, who's already in our list. It's the 20th. We're going to give him $300. Computer and internet expense comes up automatically to fix website uh, to prevent shipping charges. Make your customers pay the shipping charges to fix website and collect shipping charges. Uh, or I could change that and probably better to say to fix website to collect shipping charges. All right. That check is done. Okay. I believe that check was coming out as check five. Let's double check. Five, four, three, up. Oh. Mr. Kalama had check three. So Mr. Kalama had check three. This was check four. This was check five. You don't have to go back and change anything. Write a check number three. Okay, February 22nd. Hans Muller is going to buy five fishing packages. And you're going to give him credit. Now, here you have to be careful. These are the terms you are giving. So you're agreeing to accept 2% less than the bill if he pays cash within 15 days. Okay, so don't, don't uh, be trapped into thinking that when you see terms like this, it's automatically something on a bill that you owe. So what we're going to do now is create an invoice because we're giving 
Mr. Mueller some credit. So Hans Mueller is our customer. Quick add the customer. The date is the 22nd. So we'll fix the date. Okay, the terms that we're giving him are not in the list because I want you to learn how to enter them. But his terms are going to be 215 net 30. 2 slash 15 net 30. That's just the label. Here's where we make the real change. Net in 30 days, discount of 2 if paid within 15 days. So we've set the terms. He wants 5 complete fishing packages. Be sure to add the tax so everything looks good. Pleasure working with you. Anybody that spends five grand in my business gets a thank you. So memo, uh, sale to Hans Miller. Save and close. And we'll keep his information. All right. So now it comes down to March 1st, which is eight days later. Mr. Mueller's going to bring us a check. That's eight days later. And... Uh, if you'll note, we gave him a discount within 15. So the, here's what you watch for when you've got a discount. So on March 1st, we're not creating an invoice or a receipt. We're receiving payments. So set the date. It's March 1st. And we're receiving from Mr. Mueller. And the amount that we're receiving, uh, we could enter it now. But if you look, it says, customer has discounts available. Okay, click discounts and credits. There's the amount of the discount. When it's a customer paying the discount, the discount is a sales discount. And we just take the sales discount right out the list. Just like that. Done. And so now it shows the true amount due is going to be less than that. 5494. So if we pick up 538461... 5384.61 payment method it was a check and it looks like right now that check balances perfectly so when you have a discount and credit watch for that little note there that says you have a, a discount available so I'll just say ruler payment save and close now if you go and you turn in your work and you see undeposited funds or tax payable, you didn't finish. So use the opportunity to go back and fix it. Click on the, the banking, click the payment. Everything's good. That fixes the undeposited funds. Okay. So now we're going to go to the last one and it's going to be pay all outstanding bills. Now, here I've had students get confused. Customers say things all the time. He says he will likely have need of about 20 kits. That is not a promise to buy 20 kits. Okay, He's just telling you, hey, uh, I might buy those 20 kits in the next two months. So be ready for me. Have 20 kits there because you'll recall you only have nine and you'd get ready. But you wouldn't book a sale right here. This is just something uh, I put in here to make sure that you're reading the transactions correctly. All right, now we're going to pay the outstanding bills. That's easy. We go to pay bills. And let's take the bills at a different time. So moi moi, due on receipt. Tackle direct, due on receipt. Daiwa, corp, terms, but there's no suggested discount. Diamond has a suggested discount. So let's just pay the first three that there's no... I'll pause this. Okay, we're going to pay these three bills. We're going to uh, assign check numbers. So we'll pay, I believe we were on check six, seven, and eight. Okay, now we're going to pay more bills. I want you to treat this one special because now we're going to get a discount. So when we check this one, it says suggest a discount 3150. This time when you hit the box, 
your discount does not go into a sales discount. It goes to your inventory adjustment because what's happening here is you're paying less for some inventory than you thought you would pay. So if we don't make this correction, our inventory will be overvalued because we didn't pay the full amount. So this is going to create a negative in the inventory adjustment. So I'm done there. I'm going to pay the bill. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the bill's paid, but we paid it in an amount less than we already told our books in our inventory how much uh, that uh, those tackle boxes were worth. So I'm done here, but if you go and you look at your reports, you'll see that you have that negative inventory adjustment. So we've got to get rid of that, and the way we get rid of that is with a simple value adjustment. So we're going to go to Inventory Activities, Just Quantity Value. Now, we don't have separate inventory items. You might not remember this, but if we look at an inventory report, we have zero line reels and rods. All we have now are complete fishing packages. So this is what we're going to change. Complete fishing package. And we're going to change just the value. And this 2152 is going to be reduced by that 3150. So that's going to give us 2120.5. So all we're saying is, hey, we overvalued the inventory because we paid what we thought it was going to cost, but then we got a discount. And so now we're putting the discount in, into inventory. So put discount on tackle boxes into the inventory. And so I save and close. One last thing to do is to pay the sales tax. So we go to the sales tax item and we go pay sales tax. But remember that it's now March 1st. You have to set both of these dates. This is actually a problem on the final. Uh, I don't want you to have a problem on the final. I want you to get it done the first time. So remember to do both of those dates. Check the box. I don't know why it doesn't at least tell you what that box is for, but it's for pay. Okay, and I'm going to hit OK. Close. Now, go back and double check that your... Where's your check here? 7, 8, 9, 10. State Tax Authority. You've got to double check that, because half of the time, for whatever reason, QuickBooks just doesn't make the entry, and you just have to go back and do it again. I wish I could tell you why that is. I suspect that it's just a, a bug in the software. So now if we look at our profit loss, okay, everything is good. We've come down to an income of 731 and 11, and you'd go through the process of saving a PDF. So I'll show you how to do that. We just go up to File. And save as PDF. And I'd say QuickBooks number three income statements. And I want it on the desktop. Save. Okay, let's do the balance sheet. Okay, same thing. We're going to go save as PDF. QuickBooks number three balance sheets let me make sure i didn't bow let's sheet okay that is saved now the last one please save us all a lot of extra work here go to accountant and taxes journal but when you do this one make sure everything is showing Go to your printer and use a PDF writer. That way it goes into landscape orientation and not uh, cutting it in half so that the numbers don't go by your journal entries. So I'm going to print. It's going to pop up a screen, hopefully. Might be behind everything I've got here. I'm going to pause and get the screen.
Okay, and with the screen, you can say uh, QuickBooks number three accounting journal. Save. Okay, so that is project number three. I uh, hope by now this is becoming a little bit easier for you. And if you have any questions, please email me. Get in contact with me earlier rather than later. Because sometimes it's just one small thing you're doing wrong. And I'd rather you not get really frustrated about it. Because QuickBooks is going to save you so much time and money and anguish. It's just a good thing for business if you're keeping your records. So uh, aloha and good luck on your test.